Shaitan al-Rajim. We seek Allah's protection against the influences of the Shaitan who has been rejected and outcast. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With Allah's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abdu wa rasulu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amubar. We give open testimony. There is only one God who stands alone without any partners or associates. We further give open testimony that Muhammad, the Prophet, to whom the Quran was revealed, is Allah's messenger, his slave servant, and he is the seal of the Prophets. We pray the prayers and peace be upon Muhammad, the Prophet, and all of the righteous servants that follow him, and all else that follows this excellent greeting. It believes I greet you. Assalamu alaikum. Juma Mubarak. This is my prayer, as always, that Allah will guide my speech and my tongue, my heart. They prevent me from errors and mistakes, and I acknowledge before I begin that if I make any, they are my own. And I pray Allah that he will forgive me for those mistakes and lead me to a better understanding so that inshallah I won't make them again. I acknowledge also before beginning that any good that I might say is not from me, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I take no credit for it. I just simply thank Allah for blessing me to be a vessel to relay a message that may be beneficial. But I, I have to acknowledge that that message, should it come, benefits me first. I pray that it benefits me. I'm not saying something I hope just to touch you. I pray Allah saves me so that he, it benefits me. I advise you as I advise myself that the most important thing that we're ever gonna do in this life is to believe in God and then develop our belief in the faith and then thereafter have taqwa. Believe in God, have faith, meaning you believe in him so much that everything you say and you do in your life is in acknowledgement of the fact that he is your Lord, he is your protector, he is the one to whom we return the only sole judge on the day of accountability. And he is always present. So we develop taqwa. So we keep a conscious regardfulness of this idea and a conscious regardfulness of God. And this helps protect us from making the errors and mistakes that we sometimes make in this life that cause stain on our souls, that prevents us from the best realities or rewards in this life and that will keep us from the best rewards in the hereafter. 
Believers, we thank Allah, we thank Allah, we thank Allah for all of the countless blessings that he has bestowed upon us in the past. All the blessings that we are receiving even at this moment, whether we are conscious of it or not. And we thank Allah for all of the blessings that have yet to come for us in this life. Allah is most merciful, most giving, most gracious, and we should be grateful to him. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us conscious believers, making us people who are conscious enough to know that there is a God, that we have an obligation to him, and that we have one to our own souls. We thank Allah for giving us this life and the opportunity to live up to his expectations for us that we have an opportunity to do something in this life that he created us to do, that makes a contribution to this world. So something that will earn us his mercy and his blessings in this life and in the hereafter, we thank Allah. We thank Allah for saving us from the fire of this world and the fire the torment of the fire that comes by our own actions, our own lower selves, that he protects us from the shaitan, subhanAllah. And it's important that we keep in mind, we often think about the shaitan and the devil as being some abstract creature, invisible out there, causing problems for us. The Imam Muhammad reminded us that the shaitan really lives inside of you and me and that the shaitan really is our jinn that has gone unchecked and is out of control so either our jinn is out of control or somebody else's jinn is out of control and it's influencing us but at the end of the day we have uh free will I, I was going to hesitate because I was going to say limited free will. Our free will is only, it, it only works when it, when it falls in lines with what Allah's plan for our life is. But we have free will mean we have choices. So even if somebody else's shaitan is out of control and then is whispering to us and is beckoning us and is calling us, we answer or we reject it. So ultimately it's on us. So we thank Allah for protecting us even from ourselves. And we thank Allah for giving us good sense, the ability to think and to be rational. And Allah asks us in the Quran where he says, what little gratitude do people show for the gift of intelligence that he gave us? So Allah made us intelligent and gave us the ability to think, Bismillah, with Allah's help. We can think correctly with Allah's help. So we thank him for that. And we never wanna be those people who try to think minus the help of Allah, because that leads us into a whole lot of trouble. But we're grateful for the gift of intelligence. And we're grateful for one of the gifts that he gave us, which is Quran, and not just the book Quran, but the Quran, the big book, this creation that is around us, the creation that includes us, that has in it instructive signs from our Lord. In the creation and in ourselves and in the revealed scripture is instructive signs from our Lord that has all the help in them that we need and so Allah says surely in the creation there are signs for those that will only reflect and then come to understand we thank Allah for that in this Quran if we look at some of the guidance that God gives us in the Quran Allah says that true guidance is from Allah. 
And that is the only guidance. If you were to follow the desires of others after the knowledge, after this knowledge has reached you, you would find neither a protector or a helper against Allah. So Allah encourages us to be steadfast, to believe in him, to believe in his messengers. And he encourages us to be steadfast in prayer. Be regular in charity. And he says, whoever, and whatever good you send forth for your souls, you will find it with Allah. For Allah sees well all that you do. Dear believers, Allah says, this Quran shows us the way that is most upright. And it gives those who believe and have faith in him, who are doers of good, glad tidings, that for them will be a great reward from their Lord. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us amongst those believing men and women that receive those glad tidings of a great reward from our Lord. And it's interesting that most people of quote unquote faith say that I am a believer. I am a man of, or a woman of faith. Two things, one Allah says some people say that they believe, but faith has not yet entered into their hearts. Meaning you can believe, but your actions and deeds have to reflect what you say you believe. And at that point, you are someone with faith. And two, many of us have our own definition of what it means to be a believer. Some people think because I took Shahada, that makes me a believer. But if you took Shahada and you don't live that Shahada, you still have work to do. We still have work to do. A week or so ago, I mentioned that our Shahada is a covenant. It's not just a statement. It is a covenant and a commitment that we make with our Lord that upon us realizing who he is and our responsibility to him and to ourselves, we are responsive to him. So Allah is very clear to us about who the believers are. And he tells us in the Quran, the true characteristics of a person who fits this criteria. And so it's not really hard for us to know what we have to do to be in that category. We need to be those who believe in God, have faith in God, who believe in his messengers, have faith in his messengers, who, as I read a few minutes ago, are steadfast in their prayers, who are regular in giving charity, who are kind to the wayfarer, to those who ask, who those who are in need, whether they ask or not, those people who honor their commitments, those people who who uh, are, are tru truthful in their word, actions, and deeds. These people, and I wanted to add, add this, this other idea that you hear me say a lot, that they, they are those who study the book the way that it should be studied. Not just readers of Quran, but those who study the Quran seeking Allah's guidance and help so that we can unlock the jewels that he has in there for us to implement into our daily lives so we can be successful. These are believers. These are those with faith. And Allah says for those believers who do these things, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So we pray that Allah blesses us to be amongst the believers. And also amongst the believers of the believers, Allah says, 
Kar aflaha mukminun. Certainly, with a surety, these believers with faith must eventually be successful. So we pray Allah that he forgive us for our shortcomings and our sins, that he keeps us on his surat al-mustaqeen, that he protects us against our own lower selves and the whispers of the shaitan, that he develops in us a spirit and a desire to study his book as it should be studied, that he rewards us with insights to implement into our lives so we might be the men and women he intends for us to be, and that he causes us to strive as we should be striving in this life so that we may have his reward in this life as well as in the hereafter, and that we are saved far from the torment of the fire. Amen. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, dear believers. In the second part of my kuba, I wanted to address, you know, a lot of my kubas have common themes. So, I pray Allah that that's okay with you, that sits well with you. And 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 then part of the reason why my kubas have a lot of common things, I pray I don't, uh, they say beat a dead horse. But the reason is because. I try to pattern my method of teaching around the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches. And in the Quran you find common ideas and themes, concepts and principles that Allah wants us to understand. And Allah gives them to us repeatedly. Same ideas, principles, and concepts, but he presents them to us in different ways. He attaches them to different situations. He shows it to us with different people. But the underlining concepts, ideas, and principles are all the same. And it's simple. But Allah knows what he created. And he knows that we all learn differently. And in some cases, the, 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 the message may really be clear, but we might not be right where we need to be at that time, so we miss it. So he gives it to us again. And so I try to pattern the way that I teach around that same practice because I understand that. We learn differently. We learn through repetition. Sometimes they tell you, you know, that if you tell a lie enough, you'll begin to believe your lies the truth. Just because you heard it so many times that you believe, you start believing something is true that you really know is not the truth. You can convince yourself that a lie is the truth and you will believe it because of the repetition. We fast 30 days because you develop a habit. Habits are formed through those 29 to 30 days that we fast through a month of Ramadan. And that repetition of doing things a certain way over that period of time develops the habit. So we learn by repetition. All that to say that I wanted to focus on this idea of studying the book as it should be studied. And I wanna tie that with an ayat that I read where um, Allah says of this Quran I, I just read it that the guidance he says that the guidance of Allah is the only guidance and if you look for guidance somewhere else you will, you will find neither a protector or a helper against Allah because the true guidance comes from him The reason why I wanted to spend a little time on that is because I was reflecting on the idea that we as people have a tendency to lean on other people to instruct us and guide us and to inform us. And we have the ability 
with the intelligence, intelligence and the help of Allah, they go to the same source that they were supposed to have gone to to get the same information. I'm reflecting on that as a few days ago marked the anniversary of the, the transition of Imam W.D. Muhammad from this life. I was just reflecting on that. And I was reflecting on the day that he passed away. I remember thinking first, my first thought was, oh man, what are we gonna do now? We gonna be in trouble. We just lost our leader. This brother was uh, uh, inspired by Allah. He was teaching us, he was guiding us. And if it wasn't for Allah sending him to us, most of what we understand now about Islam, we wouldn't really know. And we could say that we could just lean on the rest of the Muslim world to instruct us and guide us. But look at what the condition of the Muslim world is. So my first impulse and thought was, oh my God, what are we going to do now? Our teacher is gone. And then my immediate second thought was a reflection on a verse in the Bible when Jesus told his people, peace be upon him, it's expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come or can't come. Uh, let's paraphrase. I immediately thought about that. And in thinking about that, I, I, I begin to consider that Imam Muhammad was for many of us a crutch. Because we knew that Allah was guiding him and instructing him, we didn't have to go to Allah and ask Allah to help us. We could just go listen to what Imam said. And now we have people who will only quote something that Imam Muhammad said. Their whole concept and understanding of what Islam is and what it should be is based on sound bites or quotes from Imam W.D. Muhammad. And outside of our community, this particular community, it's the same truth. Maybe not Imam W.D. Muhammad, but whoever, whatever Imam it is they hold in great esteem, if this Imam didn't say it, I'm not interested. In fact, that's the basis for the different schools of Islamic thought. The Hanifi school of thought, the Maliki school of thought, all these different, these different schools of thought are based on the thinking and ideas and the understanding of particular Imams. And so when now, when we look for an authority on what it is we should believe or what it is we should be doing as Muslims, we go back to the scholars, the, 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 the imams that we respect. And whatever position they took, that's the authority, we roll with it. I'm saying we were doing the same thing with Imam Muhammad and not were many of us still are doing just that. Am I saying that what Imam Muhammad brought was invaluable? Not, not valuable, I'm not saying that at all. What he brought to us was extremely valuable. But what I am telling you is what Imam Muhammad also told you. Imam Muhammad once said that Christ Jesus Peace be upon him. As much respect and honor that he's given in this world, so much so that some people have elevated him to be equal with God or say that he is God, astaghfirullah. But with as much honor and respect as Christ Jesus has in this world, Christ Jesus said, I and you, you and me. He was telling the people that whatever you see in me, whatever potential you see in me, God placed it in you too. If you see me as righteous, you could be righteous too, if you chose to be. 
If you see me living a moral uh, life, you could too. I'm an example, so could you be. And Imam Muhammad said, and Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the people, I am a man just like you. I have a company of jinn just like you, but I have caused mine to submit and be Muslim. That's the end of quote. But he was saying, so could you. If I'm a man like you and I have a jinn like you, but I've made my jinn submit and be Muslim, you have the potential to make your jinn be Muslim too. It's a choice. And then Imam Muhammad said, and some people, Nation of Islam, and some people in our community, love and honor, respect the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he said, and some of you love me. And he said, the only difference between me and you, you can look this up. Imam Muhammad said, the only difference between me and you is that I study and I am sincere. And if you study and you were sincere, you could know what I know. You didn't have to get it from him. <laughs> you could have got it from the same source that he got it from. Alhamdulillah, he was here to give it to us and to guide us to the source because you do know that that's what he was doing, right? He was guiding us to the source. And while we're, we, we're grateful to Allah for Imam W.D. Muhammad, and we, and we thank Allah for him, right? If we really love and respect that brother, we have an obligation to take what he gave us and follow it through. Imam Muhammad said this, and you can find other uh, great educators who will say something similar, if not the same thing. That the hope and the aspiration of a good teacher is not to have forever students. The hope and the aspiration of a good teacher is to give their students the tools to one day surpass what they know. Don't you as parents hope that you have taught your children enough that one day in their life, their status in this life will be better than yours? Don't you hope that they become more economically stable than you are? Don't you hope that they become wiser than you were? that you don't, they don't make the same mistakes that you made, that they are more successful avoiding pitfalls and et cetera. Don't you want that for your children? Well, that's what a good teacher wants. They want to equip you to be self-sufficient. I remember told, telling my wife once that our two younger children are very dependent. Love them, love them, but they're very dependent. And we're giving parents, so we've been letting them lean on us. And I told my wife, I said, listen now, they 24 and 26. If something happened to us tomorrow, they'd be lost. Because <laughs> they were looking for mom and dad and somebody to solve it for them. We got to just equip them to be able to handle some things on their own. Because that's what we want for them. We want them to be good and prosperous and productive and successful when we're not here to help them anymore. So it was expedient that Allah took Imam Muhammad from us. Because if he did not, we would continue to be relying on him for our understanding. And ultimately, I'm using this to get to my point. And the point really is, we really need to be studying this book for ourselves. And not because I say so, but because Allah says in Quran, those who truly believe and have faith study the book the way it's supposed to be studied. 
You don't read it and gloss over it and look for somebody else to tell you what it means. Who is the best to instruct you? Allah. Where does guidance come from? If I offer you some guidance that you find helpful, guess where it came from? Allah, it come from me. And sure, you can get it from me, but know that you can get it from Allah. Trust the intelligence that Allah gave you. Be sincere. Be sincere. And know that Allah can give it to you. I'm going to read real quickly just a, a, a quote from Imam Muhammad that someone posted on social media today. He said, I am the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Clara Muhammad. I'm not a college graduate. I'm not a wealthy man. And I don't have credentials that would impress you that much. I have followed the way of God and I have been sincere. And Allah has blessed the best of myself to connect with the reality of things. And I fear nothing but God. I enjoy great respect from people of various faiths leaders, business establishment, and the media because I stand for God and God's way. Nothing can explain the place that I have in this world except for my obedience to God and God's way. Allah in the Quran shows us that, you know, he says, it wasn't until some knowledge came that people begin to dissent with each other and argue and dispute and broke up into groups and sex. When they felt they, be, they came into some knowledge and they thought they knew better, they stopped relying on Allah and start relying on their own thinking. And they started saying, well, this means this, and that means that, and this is the reason why you do this. And no, you should, I believe you, my opinion is you should do it this way, and I'm your imam, and you should follow me. And I said imam, but we're talking about religious scholars pre-Islam. Perfect example, Maryam. May Allah be pleased with her. Mary was born into a priestly family. You know, Mary's family is the family that the prophethood line is, is, is extended from. That whole line of family is Mary's family. They were the people who were interpreting scripture and explaining to people what God said and what God wanted. But Allah tells us in the Quran that he took Mary away from them before they could teach her and sent her to be in the care of Zechariah, who was also a religious teacher. But when she got in the care of Zechariah, first I mentioned Allah, took her away so they can't influence her, can't influence her thinking. They can't tell her what she's supposed to know and understand, they ain't get a chance. She gets with Zechariah who comes to teach her. They said he, he brought her food, he brought her substance. But this isn't about really physical food. It's a higher meaning. He came to bring her food and substance, teach her. And he found her already with what she needed. Mary, where did that come from? It came from Allah. Allah taught her. And Allah taught her son. And when they returned to their people, they questioned her. Mary, hey, so you got a you, strange thing you done brought back here. You got a kid? We're not a unchaste people. Listen, think past the surface. 
They were not talking about Mary being a virgin. We was talking about Mary untouched by their influence, their understanding. That Mary. Mary, the physical woman, was a married woman. A married woman. Married to Joseph. And while they tell you she was a virgin, biblically, listen, biblically, consummation of a marriage is what makes you married. It's not the ceremony. Consummating is what makes you married. That's why you can get an annulment if you don't consummate. Like it never existed. So instead of answering, you know, Mary points to the baby. And the baby responds to them. And we shouldn't think that this was actually a baby talking to them. But this is someone, didn't we say we babies in this religion? We still learning in our infancy of our uh, understanding and growth and development. He was able to teach them what they didn't know. He confirmed what they did know, so they knew he had to get it from someplace. But he told them parts of the story they didn't know. Because it came from Allah. Allah was correcting the knowledge. He was correcting the understanding. He was correcting the direction that people needed to go with their understanding of what Allah wanted. Because the family of priestly people, the knowledgeable people, had gone astray in their understanding. I took a world religion class in college had to write a paper on a world religion guess what i chose islam i've been muslim my whole life I'm like easy a for me i wrote my paper easily all the words and then some paper comes back i'm looking for an a plus i had a d minus I'm confused. How do I get a D on this paper on Islam and I've been Muslim my whole life? The guy said, you, teacher said, you don't know what you're talking about. How can you tell me I don't know about my religion that I've lived my whole life? He told me what you wrote don't agree with what the textbooks say. I said, the textbook is wrong. I'm living it. I'm telling you, this is what we believe. That's not what we believe. This is what we practice. That's not what we practice. He said, in this class, we go by the textbook. And if you expect to get an A, you got to reflect what the textbook say. Only to suggest that even in higher learning institutions that suggest they are teaching you Islam and give you a degree and say you are an Islamic scholar, you may agree with the scholars, but you're wrong. If those scholars are not telling you what Allah says in this book, it's garbage. But we give, we give respect and honor and, and, and credits to PhDs and MBAs and BA, whatever, whatever. All these lettered people get all of the, the, the credit. And if somebody doesn't have those letters, they look, oh, man, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't got no education behind him. Muslims. Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the unlettered prophet. He didn't go to nobody's schools. Huh. He was unlettered, and how much uh, uh, ignorance people have, they call him illiterate. He couldn't read, couldn't write. And people, you Muslims even use this to say, what a mercy and a blessing. Oh, Prophet Muhammad was a proof that he was a prophet of Allah, is he was illiterate. He couldn't read. 
He couldn't write. That's the proof. What did what he produce? And he couldn't even read. The angel came and squeezed him and said, read, read, read. If the angel squeezed, if Allah sent his angel and told Muhammad to read three times, and then Muhammad was saying, I can't read, I can't read. What happened after the third time? Did he read? Or did he just keep the disposition, I can't read? Did he read? Muhammad the prophet, the same prophet that they tell you was illiterate, couldn't read. The same people tell you that Muhammad the prophet in times of war told, uh, uh, told his people that if you have captives of war, tell them if you teach 10 Muslims to read, I'll set them free. Do you think that if he couldn't read, he wouldn't be the first, teach me to read and nine other people where you could go free? You don't think he would have included himself? He going to stay illiterate? And tell everybody else to read. We got. We think. He was an unlettered prophet. Meaning he was from no schools of learning. Where did his inspiration come from? Allah. Where did his understanding come from? Allah. Who taught him? And when he. Muhammad. Reported back to the people. What Allah said, their scholars had to admit he knew more than they did. He recited back to them their own stories and corrected them. He told them the rest of the story that they didn't even know. It had to come from Allah. Don't play yourselves short. Allah will give you in abundance. You have to trust him. You have to trust yourself. You have to be sincere. You can't touch the book. It said only the purified ones can touch the book. That's a translation in the Quran. Only the purified ones can touch the book. It don't mean that you went and made wudu. It don't mean that you went and run water over your hands to touch this book. It doesn't mean that. I know somebody told you that. But that's not what that's referring to because you can take Tayamu. You can get clean dirt and prepare yourself for prayer. You can use rocks, leaves. But you can't touch the book. Touch the book because you didn't wash your hands with water. What if there's no water? That's what I'm saying. That's not that's what that's not what Allah was referring to. Allah is telling us that if we don't purify our hearts, if we don't clear our minds, they say the empty glass, uh, the clean glass, the dirty glass. If you don't pour out some of that dirt, the clean water can't come in. You're gonna get some. Dirty water is going to be mixed, clean water, mixed with dirty water is still going to be dirty. So Allah says, empty, empty what you think you know. Purify your heart and your intentions and with sincerity approach me, approach Allah, and he will give you everything you need. That's the point of what I wanted to say to us. And that I'm gonna keep saying to us because I believe that's where the real help lies. It's the only help. <laughs> SubhanAllah, it's the only help. I'm grateful that many of you have started taking Arabi. I hope you stick to it. Because in understanding the Arabic, of the Quran, you're positioning yourself to see things even clearer than you do. While at the same time, I'm going to make this statement because I've said it many times from here. You don't have to take Arabic to understand things clearer than the way you do. 
Because if you understand that Arabi means that which makes things clear, then even if you're reading Yusuf Ali's translation of Quran and you're sincere, you, in, you read it with the pure heart, pure intentions, and you seek Allah's help and guidance, even in the, in the English where Yusuf Ali left something out, what he left out, Allah is going to give it to you. Don't believe me? Try it. You'll be reading the Quran and some, something in your soul is going to be saying, it's more to this than just that. Allah is going to be speaking to you and he's going to say, uh, die not unless you be in a state of Islam. And I'm just using this and I'm done, really. I'm just using this because I heard Muslims say this. Allah says in the Quran, die not in a state except in a state of Islam. So this means that you have to accept Islam as your religion and your way of life or else you ain't going to make it. And then I said, but what about when Allah says in the Quran, whether you be Muslim, Christian, Jew, Sabian, other people of the book, et cetera, et cetera. They said, yeah, that was before Muhammad the prophet came with the revelation of Allah. And when Muhammad the prophet came, you had to accept what he taught and what he brought or else you ain't going to make it. Now, if you was before him, then you would be on equal footing. But after him, no, nope, you got to accept this. Because he was reading Yusuf Ali's translation, die not except in the state of Islam. And he said, it means what it means. Allah don't make no mistakes. And something kept saying to me, Allah don't contradict himself either. So if Allah said, whether you Muslim, Christian or Jew or Sabian, that's what he meant. Your thinking has to be off. And then I went to the Quran and fortunately I could read the Arabic. <laughs> And I saw that the word, we were talking about root words and et cetera in, in, in the class. But the root word was S-L-M, Salam, right? Islam comes from Salam. But the word in Arabic on the page was in Islam, it was Muslim. Muslimun, in fact. The word is Muslimun in the Arabic, so God is really saying, Unless you have submitted yourself to God. Don't die unless you are in a state of submission to God. Which gives you peace. See? But I figured that out before I read the Arabic. That what this brother was telling me wasn't correct. But because I could read the Arabic... I was able to verify that what Allah showed me just reading the English was correct. I'm sorry to keep you so long. I just want to help us. Wallahi, I want to help us. So we pray Allah that he makes us be amongst the Muslimun, the Mukminun, that he prevents us from our errors protects us from our errors and mistakes that he develops in us the desire to study the book that he opens up the signs so that we can implement into our daily lives and be the men and women he intends for us to be that he causes us to strive as we should strive and he rewards for our striving in this life as well as in the hereafter and he saves us far from the torment of the fire Amen. Amen.